Hey guys, we're going to second derivative test part two. We're going to go ahead and start off with the second example. f of x is equal to negative 2 cosine x minus x. Use the second derivative to, to test to see if x is equal to pi over 6 is a local max or a local min. So first find your first derivative. I'm sorry, that's not my first derivative. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's going to be a positive 2 sine x minus 1. Set that equal to 0, and let's just test just to make sure that pi over 6 is a critical number. Sine of x is equal to a positive 1 half. Now what angles of sine gives you a positive half? That is pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. You need to know your unit circle very well to do this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and find a second derivative because these are my critical numbers. I don't need to test to see if they're max or min. I could, but the problem says use a second derivative test. So f double prime of x is equal to 2 cosine x. So that's my second derivative. Now let's go ahead and plug in my critical numbers into my second derivative. f double prime is pi over 6, f double prime is 5 pi over 6, which is 2 cosine pi over 6. Pi over 6 is in quadrant 1, and, the, and any trick function in quadrant 1 is positive, so this is definitely positive. If you remember your all students take calculus, all trick functions are positive. Sine and cosecant are positive. Tangent and cotangent are positive. And cosine and secant are positive within their respective quadrants. So that is positive. 2 cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative because cosine is negative in quadrant 2, which means this is a minimum. This is a max. And let's go back to our question. Pi over 6 is a local minimum at x equals pi over 6 f has a local min because well because f prime of pi over 6 is equal to 0 which means it's a critical number and f double prime of pi over 6 was positive, and you're done. Example number 3. Use the second derivative test, if possible, to find the relative extrema of this function. Justify your answer. So now we don't have just one number to test. Now we're going to test all the numbers, which I've already been doing. Let's find our derivative. 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. Set that equal to 0. 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. I can divide everything by 6, and it becomes x squared plus x minus 2, which is now factorable. x minus 1. No, x plus 2. x minus 1 is equal to 0. So my critical numbers are x equal to negative 2, x is equal to 1. These are my critical numbers. I don't have to do a number line test. I'm doing second derivative. So find the second derivative. And that is 12x plus 6. Plug our critical numbers into our second derivative and you see how it's a much faster process sometimes it's not always like that for example let's say you have a, a fraction or a rational function that can be very lengthy so let's go ahead and um, determine the signs of the second derivative at negative 2 and 1 so 12 times negative 2 plus 6 is negative 12 times a positive plus a positive definitely positive. 
so that means I have a max and a min so at x is equal to negative 2 f has a max because f double prime negative 2 is 0 I'm sorry not zero, not double prime f prime of negative 2 is 0 and f double prime of negative 2 is negative which means concave down and that's a max similarly at x equals 1 f has a minimum because f prime of 1 is equal to 0 and f double prime of 1 is positive which means concave up minimum last example awesome so here we have a very weird function notice that we're given the derivative not the function so we don't we don't have to take the derivative to find the first derivative we already have it but notice that they give you g of x and we don't know what the heck g of x is and it's being multiplied by x squared minus x minus 6 and then it says determine whether f has a relative max or min or neither at x equals 3 alright so what do we need to do first if you if if you just take a step back what do we need to do we need to find the derivative check we already have it set it equal to 0 so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna set the derivative equal to 0 which means g of x times all of this stuff actually why don't I go ahead and just factor that that is the same thing as x minus 3 x plus 2 so it's x minus 3 x plus 2 equals to 0 which means that g of x is equal to 0 x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 2 well thankfully in this problem we're only checking x is equal to 3 so we don't necessarily have to check all critical numbers especially since I don't have g of x to be defined and I can never find out what that is unless I know what g of x is so these are my critical numbers here except I'm only gonna check x equals 3 so let's what we need to do is find a second derivative so that means finding the derivative of the derivative so that means we're gonna use the product rule because if this is my derivative it's being multiplied so it's gonna be the first this is my u all of this is my v so it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first now now that I have my f double prime of x I'm gonna plug in 3 so I'm gonna rewrite the whole thing just with 3 inside I'm sorry I, put, I forgot to put a prime on my last g of x so it's g prime of 3 now I know what g of 3 is they gave it to me it's negative 2 this becomes 6 minus 1 is 5 plus all of this becomes 0 times this is still 0 so really my answer is negative 10 which is 0 less I'm sorry negative it's less than 0 so at x is equal to 3 f has a see if it's concave it says the derivative second derivative is negative which means it's concave down so f has a maximum because f prime of 3 is equal to 0 and f double prime of 3 is negative so 3 was a critical point 
and three the, the second derivative at three was negative, so that means it's a min, it's a maximum at that point. 